Let's now graph linear equations that are either horizontal lines or vertical lines. Those types of linear equations are those that involve just one variable, either x or y. So I'm now going to ask you to graph x equals 3 on the rectangular coordinate system. But there's no y term. And for many of us, that's very, very uncomfortable to think about this table where x is always equal to 3. But what I'm going to say to you is I'm going to suggest that you do that. x is always equal to 3, remember. Um, many um, publishers will suggest that you think of this equation as x plus 0 times y is equal to 3. Because 0 times y is nothing, so it's really not there. So this statement is still just x equals 3. So you can put anything in for y into these equations. I can put a 2 in because 3 plus 0 times 2, 3 plus 0 times 2 is still 3. Or I could put a negative 1 in for y right here because 3 plus 0 times a negative 1 is still 3. 3 plus nothing is 3. And I could put a 5 in for y. It doesn't matter. x ha always has to be equal to 3. So let's plot those ordered pairs. When x is 3, y is 2. Over here, when x is 3, y is a negative 1. And finally, when x is 3, I've chosen y is 5. And here's the graph of a vertical line where x is always equal to 3. Interesting. The values for x, where they are always equal to 3, is a line that is perpendicular to the axis, um, the x-axis in this particular equation. So, interesting observation. So, please note that x is equal to 3 has a vertical line perpendicular to its own axis. And let's put another up. Let's uh, put a horizontal line up. That one again is x equals 3. Let's represent y is equal to a negative 2. And it's done the same way as the last problem. And that is, and I'm not going to bother writing out the equation, you know, 0 times x plus y equals a negative 2. I'm just going to go ahead and say, y is always equal to a negative 2. And you can just throw any value in for x. Um, you could put a negative 1 here. You could put a 0 here. You could put a 7 here. It doesn't matter. y is always equal to a negative 2. And because there's a term called 0x in front of this, and 0 times any of these is just 0, I can plot those ordered pairs now. So when x is a negative 1, y is a negative 2. That's my first ordered pair. When x is 0, y is a negative 2. And when x is 7, y is a negative 2. And I see the graph of a horizontal line that represents y values always being equal to a negative 2. So every ordered pair on that line, the y value is equal to a negative 2. And again, please notice, for an equation where y equals any number, it doesn't really matter what it is, you get a horizontal line, and that is something that's perpendicular to its own axes. Finally, let's look at two last thoughts. Um, if I were to give you the graph and ask you to write the equation, so for example, let's use this one. If I were to give you this line, and it represents the graph of a linear equation, I might ask you to tell me what that equation is. And all I would ask of you is just remember that these ordered pairs on this line have a value that is common, and that is a y value that is always equal to the number 4. So you would say to me, Pat, that's the equation for y equals 4 all the time. Um, and then finally, if I were to give you, maybe I'll do this one in a different color, if I were to give you this equation in red, and ask you to tell me the name of that equation, I would just ask you to recognize that all these ordered pairs just have one thing in common, and that is their x value. And the x value for all those ordered pairs 
is x equals a negative 6. That's the equation for that line as well. That's it in terms of vertical and horizontal lines, but the big thing that you could remember is that an equation that represents x equals some number is a vertical line, and an equation that is y equals some number is a horizontal line. And in each case, they are perpendicular to their own axes. 